Hi there. In this video, we're going to start working with a for loop in Bolt. And in the last video, we've created the inventory UI. And on click on the item, we are displaying that item in the inventory. But if I click on another item, you can see that it's not changing anything because we connected the event directly to the first slot. And in this video, what I want to do is find the next available slot in the inventory and put the item there. So the first thing that we need to do is modify our item slot so that there will be a flag if that slot is taken or not. So let's go to our item slot prefab right here. To add a flag for storing if this item slot is taken or not, I'm going to use an object variable because I want to be able to access it outside of this graph. So we'll add a variable is taken and it's going to be a boolean. Default is going to be false. And after we destroy our game object, we want to set object variable is taken and we want to pass in a boolean true. Also, we can switch the custom event from pickup to add item since the logic for picking up an item is going to be in our inventory and we'll be adding an item to our slot. So we're done with modifying our item slot graph. And now let's go and add a graph for our inventory. So back to inspector, add flow machine, embedded, added graph. Let's go to full screen. On start, I want to add this inventory game object as an application variable. So I'll go to the application and add the inventory and we'll set it as a game object. And on start event, now we want to set that variable inventory and we'll set it to self. So we'll be pointing to this object. We don't need the update event and we can quickly go to our crop carrot prefab and switch the custom event from being triggered on the item slot to be triggered on our inventory. So we can get variable, application variable, and connect it to the inventory. So now that that is done, we just need to create a custom event in our inventory. So let's go to our inventory and we'll add that custom event. So we had one argument that was passed and the event was called pickup. Now we need to go through all of these item slots and check if it's taken or not. If it's not taken, then we want to place that item inside of that slot. And since those slots are children of our inventory, we can get those children from inside of our game object. So let's create a for loop. And the for loop has the first index and the last index. The last index should be the number of item slots we have in our inventory. And we can't go count them up and put the value in there. But instead of doing that, let's actually just pull the number of children our inventory object has. So we can get child count and that will give us the count of children that our inventory object has. And we can start checking each of those items and see if it's available or not. So let's get child. The index is connected from the for loop. And then after we get the child, we want to branch out based on the value of our object variable if it's taken or not. So let's get object variable and the object variable is is taken. And we can connect the transform to the game object input. Bolt will automatically retrieve the game object from the transform so that we don't have to do it manually. And if is taken is false, then what we want to do is trigger the custom event. And the event name was add item. And we also want to trigger on the child object. If we got this far, that means that we've successfully placed the object into an item slot and we're done with this pickup. So that means we need to terminate the for loop. If we won't terminate the for loop, the logic's gonna continue and it'll try to place the same object in every available slot. And that's not what we're looking for. So to break the for loop, we can use the break loop and that will break the loop. 
Also, since the logic for destroying the game object that we collected is inside of the item slot, we need to pass that game object in our custom event. So increase the argument to one and connect those arguments through. So that way the item gets passed into our item slot and we can decide what we wanna do with the item in there. So that's pretty much it. We're done with this logic and we can test it and see if it works. Click play and let's try it out. Click on the carrot, one carrot picked up, another one, another one, and fourth one. So uh, that's pretty cool. Now let's check out what's gonna happen if our inventory is smaller than the amount of carrots we have. So let's just have three item slots, click play and see if that's gonna work. Okay, let's pick up a first carrot, a second carrot, a third, and when we try to pick up the fourth one, nothing happens because we don't have any empty slots. So the for loop just runs through and doesn't do anything, which is fine for now. You would probably want to display some kind of a message saying that the inventory is full, but for now, I think that will work. So there we go, we set that up. Now currently we just have one item in our game that we can pick up. And to pick up a more than one item, you need to be able to store the information about the item somehow. And that's what I'm thinking of doing in the next video. If you have any good ideas of how to achieve that, write in the comments. Also, if you have any questions, you can also write those in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.